I'd known it would be red. It's paint, Mama. Brian was going to change it. I said, no, no, no. You know, in her head. It's, it's red. Take off that dress. We'll burn it together and pray for forgiveness. I remember having Piper on the set, and I would look into those eyes, and I'd think, what is this woman thinking? I can see your dirty pillows, all that stuff. I can see your dirty pillows. Everyone will. It's given me such pleasure through the years. People get such a kick out of it. I can back you all my younger days. I really was a maniac. Blowing up a job with the cherry bomb in a janitor cardiac. The prom scene is, of course, that is the moment. You know, that's what the whole movie leads up to. And you have everybody there, all your key players, and everybody with their own agenda. I made up that story. And so, you know, it's like he would just come and he would say, OK, I want you to do this. Now, I, I was shocked in every situation. You know, I thought, you want me to make up a story on the spot? You know, and he would just trust me to do that. Every time the camera passed, either me or Sissy, I would speak as it was crossing me, and she would speak as it was crossing her. And the romance, and the music, and the swept away, and it was exhilarating, and romantic, and magical. It's the paradise moment for Carrie. I mean, everything is sort of just perfect, and it's the last moment of pure, ecstatic beauty until the fall begins. Sissy, once she got that blood on, she went into some kind of zen trance that is difficult for me to recreate or understand how she did it. She just did this thing that was so terrifying. <laughs> Brian would say, open your eyes wider. <laughs> you know, he knew exactly what he wanted me to do. It was very effective. I so benefited from Jack being the production designer because he had huge amounts of research that I was able to study for body language. I'd see how I wanted to end up in a scene, the position that I wanted to be in, because it was just much more dramatic. There was a stunt girl for me for uh, actually going against the stage and falling down, but he wanted a close-up of my face, and it kind of was supposed to just hit my cheek like this, but instead the, the force of the water was so strong and it was such a wide stream of water that instead it went into my ear and it broke my eardrum instantly. It was excruciating. It was unbelievable. All the people in the, the die are basically involved in this Greek tragedy of torment. So they're all guilty and they all have to go. In the book, Miss Collins lives at the end and is one of the survivors along with Susie. So I was quite hopeful that Brian would have Miss Collins live. I didn't know until right towards the end of the film that my character was going to be killed. Nobody knew how the movie was going to end. And I really thought and campaigned to Brian that Miss Collins should live. And then when I found out I was going to die at the prom, I was like, damn, you know. Then I was really curious about how I'm going to die. And so this basketball backboard thing was really fascinating. And it would come down like a guillotine. And then there was about a foot of balsa wood. And so it was meant to appear that it, you know, cut Miss Collins in half. Then they put the stunt woman in, and she's going to take the hit, but they don't know. <laughs> because they've never tried it, how it's going to work, right? So they put the stunt lady in, and we're all watching, and sure enough, it hit. And the boss did everything it was supposed to. It broke nicely and stopped right at her midsection the way it was supposed to. So then we put me back in the shot after the stunt girl took the blow, and Brian's directions to me were classic. <laughs> he comes up to me and he goes, I want you to squirm like a bug on a pin. It was very exciting. I'd never shot a death scene before. It was all very, very fun. I think one of the most dangerous things, one of the most frightening things, was when the car flips. I'm in the front of the shot, 
that was as scared as I've ever been. I wasn't in any danger, but you know, you're so worried that you're going to do something and screw up something that some stuntman is risking their life to do. And so that was very upsetting. We were just in the car and we were screaming and then it was done optically to make it look like the car was spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. It was very exciting to shoot that sequence and to watch the stunt person. It was actually Dick Zyker who did the explosion in the car. There was one scene that was not rehearsed of mine because it almost inadvertently got dropped from the script. I thought it was too long, it was too expository that late in the movie, and Piper had really done a lot of work on the speech and she wanted to do it, and, and she finally said, you gotta let me do it, and I said, fine, let's shoot it. I should have given you to God when you were born. And I was weak and backsliding. We never rehearsed it. And I was glad because I wanted it to be as raw and fresh as possible. I chose to think that this was the most glorious, wonderful thing that could happen to my child, it, like graduating high school. My elaborate death took a whole day. The interesting part was when I got wounded in places on my body, and there was a steel girdle made for my chest area, and on it were wooden blocks in the strategic spots where I was going to be wounded. There was a wire attached to the wood, and it would come out through a hole in my gown. It would go across the room to where the special effects man was standing, and he would put on the scissors or the potato peeler, or whatever, and very slowly this thing would just jiggle along on the wire until it finally met me. In the script, Margaret gets impaled with all of these things and reacts normally. And I remember I wanted something fresh, and I said, oh, Brian, you know, it would be interesting if maybe when she's dying, that it's great that she loves it. He said, oh, terrific, yeah, do that. There were a lot of times that they wanted to shoot my feet going upstairs, they wanted to shoot my hands, and they wanted to send me home and use a stand-in, and I was adamant about doing all my own foot and hand work. So they dug a hole, and then they put plywood on it. I got in the hole, and then they had a hole cut with pumice rock, so it was just really pretty awful when I brought my arm up. Amy came up with the flowers and put them down and at the right moment I hollered to Sissy to grab and she got her hands up through the charcoal and stuff to grab Amy. It was hard for mom I think because that last moment I don't think she'd ever seen me hysterical. Brian was able to tap into the whole mother-daughter dynamic of that moment with the truth flowing. She was so emotionally <laughs> wrought up that I was holding on to her and saying all the lines and so forth. And at one time, I was sure that I said Amy instead of Sue. And I was so worried about this that I remember on the screening of the film I was listening, particularly for that. And of course, you couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear a thing. Not, it wasn't just the music which swelled, but the audience was just screaming, screaming, screaming for about 10 minutes. So. It didn't matter if I called her George. <laughs> it would not have mattered. To have been a part of Carrie is one of the high points in my film career. To work with a great director like Brian De Palma, with some great actors, and to have it be a part of history, it really is a part of film history. It's a big kick for me. I don't know that I could say that I knew that we were shooting a film that was going to be a classic and that people would be talking about forever and ever. I can say that when I saw the first dailies that I saw, I knew 
we were making a good movie. I thought it was the coolest horror film I'd ever seen. It was like really this cool pop horror film. You know, everything before that I had seen was kind of like these just terrible B flicks, you know, with monsters and guys running around with hatchets and stuff. And this one was different. I think it really changed the thinking about horror. I had no idea that this was going to be uh, thought of as a classical movie years later. I knew I would worked very hard on it. I knew it had an incredibly sophisticated visual design. And I knew the performances were really good. And it was a really great idea of a book from Stephen King.